Well, greetings and salutations, Series 7 Test Taking Weekend Warriors. This is Series 7 Guru coming to you from my studio in fabulous Las Vegas. We have some explication requests. This is the first of three. Uh, the best free supplement to your uh, paid study materials is my YouTube channel. But if you don't have a Kaplan QBank, I highly recommend it. And Quick Sheets is a good paid supplement investment for you. With my Guru 10 discount code at checkout, you can get a Kaplan Q bank for about 60 bucks and you can get the quick sheets for, I think, a little under 20 bucks. Uh, and for that commercial, Kaplan allows me to give you a free look on Kaplan content. We'll help you with any questions you have, but it's just easier if it's Kaplan because you can send me the QID and I can bring it up uh, backstage. This is QID 126-4136. Uh, this is highly testable. I can't imagine any draw on your exam in which you're not going to be asked about parity. And you can't be fumbling around with parity calculations. So let's get started on this one. A 7% convertible debenture is selling at 101. So I think the first thing I would do as a test taker is turn that into a bond price. Remember, that's 101% of par. Par is 1,000. And so that's 1,010. Yeah, let's put that there. Let's get that a little bit of font. It's convertible. It's convertible into the common stock of the same corporation at 25. I can't stress this to you enough. When given the conversion price, you need to establish the conversion ratio. So you just as a test taker, every time you get that, now maybe you get a nice draw on the test and uh, you know you say, thank you very much. Maybe they'll give you the conversion a ratio, but uh, you need to be able to recognize when given the per, per conversion price, you need to establish the conversion ratio. You can't do parity calculations without knowing the ratio. So that's going to be the next thing we need to be able to do here. And it looks like I'm missing an O there. And uh, let's make it fit across the whole top of the screen. There we go. All right, so now let's do that. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to take par, par. Now be careful because par, if this is a convertible preferred stock, would be a hundred. Here it's a thousand, and we're going to divide by the conversion price, and that will give us the conversion ratio. And so that's a very important thing as a test taker to be able to do. That equals conversion ratio. So in this case, uh, that's going to be a thousand divided by twenty-five, and we find out the conversion ratio. Let me get my calculator. Uh, I'm not going to take a chance on the arithmetic. So thousand divided by 25 is 40 shares. So anytime I want, I can turn this 7% uh, debenture into the issuer and they'll give me 40 shares of the common stock. Now, no way they might see that expressed, not that you're going to have to do anything with it other than that, but it's 40 to one, right? 40 shares for each bond. So, you know, Basically, you can convert any time, but at the end of the uh, whatever the maturity is here, the corporation is going to say, do you want uh, the stock or do you want your $1,000 back? I will, uh, in the video description, put my uh, entire lecture on parity. I have a whole lecture on it. I'll pin it. I'll also link it in a pinned comment for you. Anyway, so, so now we're back in business. If the stock were trading at parity, so what parity means is equal value. So they're saying if the stock had an equal value to the bond, what would be the price of the stock? The stock had an equal value to the price of the bond, because you know that's kind of what parity is. Parity means equal. Parity. Now you're either going to get a parity of the stock, which you get in this one, uh, or parity of the bond. So you might have to do either here or they're being asked about the stock. The stock is a 23. So when we figure out what parity is, you know, most likely this uh, stock is going to be below uh, trading below parity, most likely. 
because if it wasn't, there'd be an arbitrage opportunity. So I'm expecting that I'm going to come up with a higher value than what the stock is at right now. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, by the way, if you can't remember what to do on the test, you should divide. And if you can't remember what to divide, you take the first number and you divide it by the second number. That takes care of 90% uh, of uh, Series 7 math. Now, if it was going the other way, period of the bond, it'd be multiplication. But here, what I'm going to do now, let me get a bigger font, is I'm simply now going to apply the formula. And the formula for this, which is very testable, let me put that in a different color, is we're going to take the current market price of the convertible, and we're going to divide by the conversion ratio. Let's get that in place. We can see this. So I take the current market price of the convertible and divide by the conversion ratio. Uh, listen, I, you know, I'd be awful surprised if you don't see this on your exam, something similar to this. Um, all right, so let's now take our formula, which is the current market price of the convertible divided by the conversion ratio. Before we do that, let's put what that equals here. Equals parity of the stock. And that's what I'm being asked here, what is parity of the stock? So you're either being asked parity of the stock or parity of the bond. And again, equal value, right? So if the uh, convertible is trading at 1,010, Now we're going to take the 1,010, the current market price of the convertible, and we're going to divide that by the conversion ratio, which was 40 shares. And we should get our answer, which is a parity of the stock. And so I'm going to take my calculator, 1,010, Divide by 40 shares. And I get 25.25. So and that's when they're equal values. If you pay 1,010 for this bond, you would be paying the equivalent to 25.25 for the stock. Equal value again. Now, right now, that doesn't make any sense. Because, you know, right now, the stock is at uh, 23, right? So let's put that there. So your minimum expectation is that if you buy this, you know, you may or may not buy this. But if you do, CMP means current market price. Um, if you do, your minimum expectation is this stock is going to go up past 25, 25. Otherwise, it, you know, well, you might not buy it because of the income, but th that would be typical, by the way, that you would expect the stock to be trading uh, below that. Otherwise, there would be an arbitrage opportunity, and that could also be a test question. Arbitrage is profiting from price discrepancies. That alone is a test question. And sometimes you'll get like a question where the parity in this example is like 25, 25, and the stock is at 26, and you'd have to recognize there's an arbitrage opportunity. Uh, so that is the answer to this question. I always love it when people ask questions that are going to be on the exam. You know, sometimes people are asking for help on questions, and I go, well, I don't mind helping you, but I really don't think you're actually going to uh, need that, but you are certainly going to have to be able to know uh, parity of the stock and how to do that. And then remember, you also need to know how to do parity of the bond. And again, I will uh, put in the video description uh, a lecture to help you with that. Okay, well, I did that as we went along. Um, uh, hopefully, I recorded this. Let's see if I recorded it. <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, man, I just dawned on me that maybe I wrote this all out before I actually <laughs> recorded it. So I always hope you found that helpful. Uh, remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is a cinch, yard by yard. Your Series 7 is hard. If you have any questions you need help with, just send them my way. Bye-bye.